most people trying to learn computer science give up because they end up trying to learn four things at the same time which is extremely infuriating and confusing and unfortunately there is no clear solution for this as well because all these topics are interrelated hence this section will clarify for you how to approach this infinite loop most people get tired and take the easy way out which is just focusing on the interview preparation in the short run this approach of just trying to memorize everything two weeks before an interview works for some but unfortunately in the longer run it's not going to help your career at all and just getting through one interview doesn't mean you have a career you have to survive in the industry for at least 15 to 20 years in this section we will focus on a systematic approach how to align these four topics just for the bare minimum to get you started in your career the rest has to come from your job problems the use cases and the kind of business domain you are going to work in but understanding the correlation between these topics is essential so please pay attention to these basics that are being presented to you in this particular section what exactly are programs they might seem like complex entities but today we'll unveil their core components as renowned computer scientist niklaus wirth aptly stated programs are essentially a combination of two fundamental concepts algorithms and data structures imagine algorithms as the recipes outlining the steps to achieve a specific task data structures on the other hand are like the ingredients the organized way we store and manage information together they become the heart of any program algorithms process the data structures making decisions and manipulating information to achieve the desired outcome studying algorithms alone is like having a recipe without ingredients it remains theoretical similarly data structures on their own are just building blocks without a plan the true magic happens when we combine them this synergy is why you will find algorithms and data structures taught hand in hand this knowledge forms the foundation of your software development journey it equips you with the tools to translate concepts into concrete implementations remember learning only a specific programming language is like mastering tools in a kitchen but understanding algorithms and data structure is similar to knowing the fundamentals of cooking essential for creating diverse and efficient programs as a college student if you don't have a computer science background don't worry once you are comfortable with your core curriculum start exploring algorithms and data structures around your second year this is a commitment that requires dedication and consistent practice allocate 6 to 8 months for focused learning with regular practice through assignments and projects rushing through this crucial step will only lead to gaps in your understanding by investing time and effort in mastering these concepts you will be well equipped to embark on your exciting software development journey remember the journey of a thousand lines of code begins with a single algorithm and data structure let's begin with the most basic data structures everyone must know arrays are basically a contiguous block of memory locations and that's where most of their properties come from linked lists are memory locations linked to each other by their memory addresses so this is a non contiguous block of memory trees provide a more hierarchical way of organizing data it could be contiguous or non contiguous memory and finally there are hash maps which provide you a lookup functionality between keys and values intermediate data structures are very useful in representing reality and they can be built using the basic data structures so graphs happen to be one of the most used ones because the internet relies heavily on them and they can be directed or undirected and there are multiple ways of representing the real world in terms of graphs another interesting intermediate structure is suffix trees which are extremely useful while processing text information storing data in a binary heap allows extracting max and min with high efficiency there are many other data structures but basically their selection depends on the efficiency of the crud operations which is create read update delete the cost involved in doing these operations makes certain decisions very clear the crud operations become useful while implementing algorithms the most important type of algorithms are sorting algorithms which help us organize the data so that it can be processed further far more efficiently 
there are various kind of sorting algorithms and picking the right sorting algorithm is always one of the interview questions you will face throughout your career once the information is organized finding the right information the user is expecting becomes the next problem where the searching or traverser algorithms are extremely dominant so understanding a particular data structure and its traversal techniques is key to success for every single program sorting and searching algorithms give rise to the problems of complexities which is basically understanding how much space or memory will be required and what is the amount of operations that will be required to perform a certain operation and this is where the notion of np completeness also comes into equation that whether a certain algorithm can be achieved realistically remember all these things are going to run on machines which require electricity which requires money so doing something impossible is really really costly The best place to learn algorithms and data structures for the first time in your life is in a university classroom. It is mandatory that you learn it from people who have experience in teaching, not just people who are reading something and then telling you what they have understood. There is a huge difference between a college professor and a YouTuber. So please try to find the right sources. With online learning, a lot of things have become freely available to each one of us. And in the resources that I'm going to provide you, you will find those links. The biggest advantage of learning from a proper course is that you get a curriculum, you get study notes, you get reading material, which tells you which sections of particular books to read. And you will also get assignments from their websites, which will help you practice. This can help you reduce the scope of your planning significantly, which will save you months in a single shot. With infinite information comes the responsibility to decide what do you need exactly right now. So my suggestion would be start with undergraduate level courses to confirm whether your basics are in shape or not, and then dive deeper into the graduate level courses to ensure that your knowledge is mapping to the years of experience you have. So this is something that might be optional for a college student right now. But if you have four to five years of experience, this is a must. The key to any successful career is not just the knowledge, but the ability to apply the knowledge at the right time and to learn the right knowledge when necessary. When learning your understanding takes the precedence, you have to ensure that you are practicing everything and getting it correct. You have to be systematic, create a list of things that are immediately necessary for your career and understand the fundamentals behind them. While working on professional projects, you will have to focus on performance, which is basically getting things done as fast as possible and as correctly as possible. And when I say performance, this is not just the employee performance, but the actual machine performance of execution. The value add of data structures and algorithms will be measured based on the value you have added in the most limited time possible. As they say, time is money. In case of data structures and algorithms, the more work you can get done with the least amount of machine instructions will save you the most money. At least in theory, the interview processes and the code review processes are supposed to check the correctness of your decision making. The system design interviews are also trying to test something similar, but mostly it is seen in coding interviews where your choices are questioned and you have to prove that you can come to the right conclusion with the correct reasoning. Any software career which lasts more than 15 years demands you to be correct technically under pressure. If you cannot handle pressure, then you are in the wrong business and there is no harm in accepting it and moving away because life matters more than just a job the short answer to that question is yes of course programming requires mathematics unfortunately whenever the word mathematics is used everyone thinks they need to know every single theorem that has ever been proved by humanity that's what causes the problem but that is not true like we saw in the data science example math is a becoming a part of the ecosystem at various points and you need to decide what is necessary at that point in time and apply it accordingly if you don't know it learn the necessary part and just move on let's look at some practical application of mathematics 
Mathematics is sort of a language for correctness. The science can be represented in terms of maths, which reflects the reality and helps us prove the facts of the universe. When we have multiple opinions, it is important that we conclude on something which is factual. And that reasoning can come from mathematics. So the number theory can be considered as a truth which all humanity follows and so does the universe. While working on programs, there are multiple possibilities of implementing the same logic. And that analysis can be done using mathematics to help you figure out which is the best option for that particular situation. As I reminded you that there are some NP-complete things in the world as well. Maths also helps you apply deduction, which means when you don't know the right answer, just try eliminating all the wrong ones. In short, maths makes the universe repeatable and predictable. And when it comes to programming, predictability is a very good thing to have. Knowing basic high school algebra is necessary for all programmers because all the algorithms and the data structure proofs will take you back to this basic algebra and certain discrete mathematics. The next thing which you need to learn is statistics. Now the depth of statistics which you need to understand will keep increasing as you go higher in your career. But basic statistics for your career is going to be necessary even from day one. And the most underrated thing which you can learn is probability theory, which is sometimes called as stochastics as well. And this is something which will give you a very niche perspective about how to make decisions at scale. Again, the best place to start is a well-structured course by an academic or a professor. And you will notice that the algorithms and data structures will always provide you the prerequisites in maths which are required to understand that topic. So it is recommended that you take certain undergraduate course in discrete mathematics, which will help you understand the algorithms and data structures. So just go to the curriculum of the algos course and see what the prerequisite they are suggesting. And you just pick up that course and start doing it as well. Statistics and probability will keep becoming part of your work in intermittently. So it is best advised that you take the courses for the undergrads first and then just keep reading the topics which are relevant to your current needs. So you will have to keep scaling through this knowledge throughout your career. You don't have to become a mathematician. Just focus on that aspect while putting in effort. The first place where mathematics will become relevant is capacity planning. It could be project planning kind of a situation where you have to estimate the number of hours or it could be the infrastructure planning, which is how much cost is required, how many machines are required and all those kind of things. So that is basic algebra. The next thing is debugging. Sometimes the program starts running slow. Then you have to go deeper and understand why a request is taking a little longer than necessary and those kind of things, which is again, a mathematical analysis, you are doing deduction. While you are monitoring systems, you have to look at statistical patterns to understand whether the system is running correctly or not. What are the possible bottlenecks? Are there any patterns that are happening? So those kind of things are very statistical in nature. In interview, all these things keep getting covered, but you don't realize it since they are not explicitly asked. So when somebody is asking you about the time and space complexity, you are doing maths. When you are doing system design and you are doing capacity planning, again, it is mathematics. When you are talking about what the errors are, how you are going to distribute traffic, again, it is statistics. You are going to use probability to understand how long your system is going to run. So this is part of your daily engineering. Programming languages are tools for translating theoretical algorithms, data structures, and solutions into executable code that can solve real world problems. For anyone entering the software industry, proficiency in at least one programming language is crucial. This skill is the entry point for engaging with software development and understanding how the theory of algorithms and data structures is being converted into revenue. Not only developers, but professionals in other roles within the software industry, such as QA specialists, also benefit from familiarity with programming languages. This knowledge is essential for interacting with software systems and building your own automation tools whenever necessary.
Gaining proficiency in programming languages early in one's career can significantly impact one's ability to contribute effectively across various software development tasks and role, and this defines your career growth. While a deep understanding of programming language design, performance optimizations, and related technical aspects may be crucial for developers, individuals in other roles may require a different level of proficiency. Understanding what programming languages can achieve is fundamental for all, but the extent of knowledge required varies based on the role within the software industry. Studying with a language like Python, Java, or C++ is beneficial due to their comprehensive support for the object-oriented programming principles. This choice lays a strong foundation for understanding software design and development. While learning a programming language, focus on file handling, networking, and build systems within the language. Understanding how to deliver software through the entire production pipeline is crucial for practical software engineering from a career perspective. Just knowing a few keywords will never be enough. Most people struggle to grow after learning a programming language because they have always been thinking in terms of an interview clearance criteria. You have to think from a software delivery perspective. Understand what all it takes to ship software using a particular programming language. And that's where you will become an efficient generalist. Familiarize yourself with the entire ecosystem of your chosen language, including package management, dependency management, and build tools. This will ensure that you can take a project from development to deployment independently. Learning a language like C++ can provide deep insights into memory management, which is a crucial aspect of software performance and efficiency. Java, with its garbage collection, offers a different perspective of managing memory without manual intervention. So you should be open to ideas from multiple programming languages. Remember, a successful software career will encompass multiple programming languages. So don't be rigid. Understanding each programming language as its own entity without trying to draw too many parallels with others can prevent confusion and solidify your grasp on unique concepts and constructs. Begin your learning journey with official documentation and tutorials. These resources often provide the most structured and accurate information for getting started and advancing your skills. You can use my notes as well to ask the basic questions. Be selective about online courses and other learning materials, prioritizing those that offer hands-on practical programming experiences over those designed merely to entertain or keep the audience engaged. Remember, it takes years to get a programming language in your muscle memory correctly. If you are just looking at someone typing on the screen and then trying to copy paste code and feel better about yourself, you are wasting your time and you are in the wrong industry. So please be aware of people who are just trying to sell you something which is not going to help you in your career. Be selective. Engage in writing programs that solve real problems, focusing on areas like file handling, networking, data structures, algorithms, understanding the build process. This approach ensures you gain practical, applicable skills rather than just theoretical, interview-oriented knowledge. If you plan to use a programming language for interviews, ensure you have extensive hands-on experience with it. Regular practice, ideally daily, helps embed the language into your muscle memory, reducing stress and increasing your fluency during interviews. Knowledge of at least one programming language is essential across all software projects. This forms the foundation upon which software solutions are built. So you cannot ignore this knowledge to get started in your career. The extent to which you need to understand a language's syntax, design patterns, and advanced features depends on your specific contributions to a project. So don't try to learn everything. Engineers, including seasoned professionals, often fall into the trap of framing problems and solutions strictly within the context of a familiar programming language, rather than focusing on algorithms, data structures, and problem-solving strategies. This can shorten your career significantly. 
Using pseudocode and maintaining an abstract approach during the design phase can prevent premature fixation on language-specific solutions. This encourages a focus on underlying concepts and logical structures, and you have to practice this. Trying to fit problems into specific language features rather than assessing the problem's nature and choosing the most suitable solution can lead to inefficient or overly complex implementations. Modern software projects often benefit from a polyglot approach, leveraging the strengths of different programming languages for various components of the systems. For example, using uh, Golang for infrastructure management, C++ for performance critical tasks, JavaScript for front-end development. So in various capacities, you will be learning multiple languages. But when you are learning your first programming language, you have to create this systematic thinking perspective so that you can adapt to new languages whenever necessary. Please don't get trapped in the interview mindset and thinking in terms of only limited language features. Building a successful software career involves thinking at a high level, focusing on ideas and concepts rather than getting bogged down into specific language syntax. A versatile understanding of multiple languages and technologies enables you to tackle a wide range of problems and adapt to evolving trends and challenges in the industry.